Hello and welcome back to Rage Gaming Videos. My name is Hollow and once again we're back to talk more patch improved weapons. Newly in 1.04 we have seen a load of buffs to sorceries, incantations and of course your weapons and their ashes of war. Last time we had a look at five buffed up weapons in the patch and we're back to do another set of five today after your comments and further review on our part. Certainly with the amount of changes in that patch many weapons have become more relevant and certainly a lot better than they were or even very strong. So let's take a look. The Royal Greatsword is the weapon that I used most during my original playthrough. I fell in love with this weapon. I really enjoyed it. That Ash was very strong. Does a lot of damage. Very effective. But it was a bit slow and in PvP very easy to predict. You could hit people with it but they'd need to basically not expect the range of the explosion. There's hyper armor on the flip which is awesome. So it was actually a really nice trading tool in PvP. The problem is you would then get stuck in a long animation where you're exposed and vulnerable and it's also very predictable the explosion timing even though it's nice range so to see this get buffed it's definitely interesting they have increased its cast speed and decreased the recovery time both are very good for this weapon it does not need a damage buff it is very strong and effective it's just the speed at which it comes out so i'm interested to see how this this feels okay yes okay yes let's let's do a side by side actually let's do a side by side that is significantly faster, especially, at least for me, it feels on the explosion specifically way faster. You're stuck in that animation way less time. Let me try and roll out of that. Yeah, you come out of that immediately. That is so much nicer to use. But then we have even more buffs because this is a colossal weapon. This is a colossal sword that received three different buffs. It received attack speed buff to its base attacks. When you're two-handing, you're going to be attacking a lot faster. You actually, the colossal swords or colossal weapons in power stance, the L1 or, you know, both attacks, the power stance attacks, the attack speed of those has gone up. The actual damage, the raw damage values of your attacks while two-handing, that's gone up as well. It is not actually reflected in the AR but it has gone up and then your blocking has also been buffed so now we have a 71 physical resistance and even a 63 magic on this weapon when blocking that's solid just below your average medium shield better than it was though that's always appreciated so it's been buffed in many ways its attack damage is better its attack speed is better and of course the all-powerful and respectable ash of war with its big damage that's even quicker too this is definitely a weapon that's benefited from the buffs. Let's see how it does against some more mobile target here with the Tree Sentinel. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. 1,000, nearly 400 damage on the explosion. Just under 1,300 on the actual flip. This has, you know, the hyper armor. So you see, I took the slam there while doing the flip. Most weapons, they're going to get knocked on their ass there. This weapon, the hyper armor on that flip is very strong. All I would want to see for this weapon now in the future, if all possible, would be the ability to do this flip and then cancel out, like roll out there before the explosion. We're seeing that with some other weapons now, like the God Slayer Greatsword. You can actually roll out of that before doing the FP cost black fire swing. You can roll out of it after the first swing. So imagine if you could do this front flip for no FP and roll out of it. That will be nuts. Still, in its current state, very good weapon. Happy to see this. Next, we have kind of a double one. It will focus on one weapon, but I will mention both because very recently I had a video about this build you're seeing now, the Blade of Light and Dark. An edgy name for what is a cool combination of daggers with their very similar Ashes of War and effects. To cut to the chase, the Blade of Death Ash of War via the Black Knife is the superior Ash of War, as well as this knife actually being better damage-wise as well thanks to its better deck scaling compared to the faith scaling of the Blade of Calling. To use both at once is just fun. The Blade of Calling, using the Blade of Gold, does more initial damage but less damage over time, and the Black Knife also reduces health by 10% of your target because of the Destined Death effect. So between the two of them, having two Black Knives is going to be better because you have better attack scaling, but then maybe it's better to have a different weapon with a unique or interesting Ash of War that can benefit you. Ultimately, what's important is that both of these weapons have seen a buff and I would actually rate the black knife as an underrated very good faith weapon and perhaps that's because it's a dagger and its tiny range is very awkward if we look at pvp with these weapons trading with these daggers is very difficult even though you have really good combos fast attacking and big damage if you do get the multiple hits off if you're attacking so quickly unfortunately their range just makes it so unlikely you're actually going to trade well and you don't have much poise so you're not going to get a big hit in a single hit you need to get a full combo in pve where you're 
against bosses and can really go to town, you know, really just spam these attacks, well, that's where it shines the most, and that's where it's really effective. Specifically, what was buffed with these weapons then is the Ash of War, which helps with that range and that situation. These are Ashes of War where we leap up into the air and shoot out an attack. Depending on which weapon you use, depends on the effect. Let's start with the Black Knife and the Blade of Death then. This has had its cast speed increased and the recovery time is faster. So compared to the old one, it's about half a second faster. We leap up in the air and we shoot out the shot faster. In PvP, the same thing is going to happen. They are going to roll to avoid that based on the timing of the attack coming out and it's not really going to change that much. What it does allow you to do is create more pressure because you're actually able to get more out over time, spamming ranged attacks to pressure an enemy. And of course, with the other buff, we have better recovery time, so we can get out of it and evade the incoming blow, whether in PvP or PvE. Meanwhile, with the Blade of Calling, which has the Blade of Gold Ash of War, also seen the cast speed and decreased recovery time buff, but also decreased the stamina cost, so it's a little bit less uh, taxing to use in combat on your stamina. Definitely a good thing because it is the weaker of the two blades. There's also another important change to the Blade of Death here that I didn't mention. It reduces the health pool by 10%. And that's now actually reflected in game. Do you see that little gray bar? That shows the health bar that is now missing. We can actually see how long it lasts. I believe from my testing last time, pre-patch, it's about 20 seconds or so that that debuff, there you go, that it lasts. And yeah, it seems to still be the case. But how cool is that, that we can actually see the decreased health now? Either way, what you're seeing is my ability to spam out these attacks and feel a lot more safe doing so because I can actually recover and evade much quicker. I'm able to output better range DPS because of that to match with the really quick attacks of the double dagger. The black knife is an underrated faith weapon and one I absolutely want to talk about more in the future. I really recommend you give it a try if you're doing a faith build of any kind. And while the blade of calling is definitely better, I still don't think it competes with the black knife just because of the deck scaling giving more damage and the Asher War providing more for only slightly more FP cost. Next up, we have the Magma Worm Scale Sword. This old big curved great sword is one that I've actually talked about recently. I think it's a very good faith weapon, perhaps a little underrated. Considering that it's a mix of physical and fire, you know this weapon is going to get some serious AR with like a little bit of buffing. With a reasonable 913 AR to begin with, we can shoot that up to nearly 1,200 with just flame grant me strength and a fire wondrous physic as a curved greatsword i think it's got a great move set for pve but actually reasonably low range in pvp and it comes with the really interesting guillotine slam r2 kind of unique to this weapon and its actual ash of war the magma guillotine really takes that step forward and that's what's actually been buffed in the patch the magma guillotine now costs less stamina to do which is very appreciated it has increased cast speed throughout and you have decreased recovery time on the follow-up input let me show you what it is show you what it is so it's the slam the explosion of fire and then the follow-up where you sort of pull back and create a little bit more fire this in pvp was wonderful it took me a little bit to get used to like how to land this and as it turns out this is a trading monster thanks to its hyper armor as someone tries to trade with you as you do that you absolutely clean out their health and then the magma obviously deals damage over time in pve that is incredible because you don't need to worry about whether you can trade or not you can just do it over and over to a target if it stands still in the magma it's going to take damage but honestly just the hits of the ash of war does disgusting damage especially when you got that buffed up ar now it's got faster cast speed we can spam this out faster dealing bigger damage much more effective in your boss fights and with the recovery time we're able to deal with incoming blows a bit better as well as deal with that in pvp giving us kind of better odds but yeah i really enjoy this weapon Again, in PvP, it's extremely fun to use because it's an absolute beast. If someone takes the trade with you and you have this kind of AR, they're gonna feel it. And then the Ash of War trading is just ridiculously strong. And now it is just better. But yes, the Magma Worm Scale Sword, a thing you can get fairly early in a playthrough and I think is very, very strong. We are talking, of course, about Morgoth's Curved Sword. I included this in one of my underrated weapons list videos because I feel that, yeah, the stats are good. The uh, 
scaling is good. It has bloodlust buildup. It's an arcane weapon, so you scale up the bloodlust buildup. As we know, that's still insane in this patch. It kind of came down to the cursed blood slice, though. That's the Ash of War on the weapon. You would do a charge forward and then a slice. That slice would sort of cut the air and then that would explode. And then you could do a follow up attack, which was through another slice and then another sort of air slice explosion. The delay on the charge was actually kind of a good thing in PvP because it would catch people out, but those that are wise to it would simply trade with you or hit you during that long cast, so it did leave you very exposed. I enjoyed using it, but I suppose when I think about it in PvE, Yes, that long kind of charge forward time was an issue where you're like just trying to get the damage out and you're walking into the enemy instead of attacking them. So in the new patch, we see a buff to that Ash of War. We see an increased cast speed and decreased recovery time. That decreased recovery time is undoubtedly going to be really nice to have, getting us out of situations where, yeah, we're about to get hit after we're doing the attack. We need to evade. So it's a charge forward. I think that comes out quicker. And then the follow-up, which also feels quicker to me. If we combine them, uh, compare them side by side... Oh, it's obviously faster. I guess where this matters most is your ability to absolutely spam it out. Let's try and do a follow-up really quick. Yeah, so the... Fa ah, that's really good, actually. The reduced recovery time, not just about getting out and evading during the animation. Like, I do the attack and then I'm like, oh, i got to get out of that roll. But also, you can follow up faster so you can spam it into bosses more effectively. I just did a quick run of Godric on New Game Plus with it. We were absolutely spamming the Ash of War primarily just to see how much I could actually get away with it now instead of just training every time and while you still do trade a little bit here or there your windows of opportunity are significantly better now and when we can combo this we are doing a lot of bleed build up and a lot of burst damage and that can even stagger enemies it is a simple targeted buff to this weapon the ash of war but i think it's an effective buff and hopefully we'll see it more in general gameplay last but certainly not least then we have a weapon that I included in my original faith weapon video this is of course maricus hammer a really cool weapon just Law-wise, design-wise, and of course, where it comes from when you're fighting Radigan slash Marika in the final boss fight. This weapon has received a buff specifically to its Ash of War, the Gold Breaker, which had you leap up into the air and then slam down in a holy AoE. I thought it was extremely cool, uh, but admittedly, in PvP, it was quite hard to land. You would go up into the air, and though at a certain point, you would have some hyper armor to keep you in the air once you'd raised up. It was coming down slow. It was coming down predictable, and it was very easy to avoid. If you did hit it, it would do a lot of damage. And in AoE, obviously, incredible tool. Feels great, looks great. It's just, it was hard to land. As we have seen with many weapons in the Rashes of War, they have addressed that. We have a decreased FP cost, which is really nice. It's now 26 FP to actually cost this thing. But it's also faster and more efficient. So it comes out quicker, we're up in the air, we slam down much faster. And there's also better recovery time to get us out of that. So when you land the attack, they're going to be staggered for a moment, and then you can get out of there quickly before you deal with that. If we do the direct comparison, you can see, yep, I'm coming down from the air much quicker. And as you can see, the slam is effective. It looks incredible. Sending them all flying in the air like that. It looks great. It feels great. And as weapons as well. I do think hammers are a little bit underrated. As the Marika Hammer is a mix of physical and holy, then we can increase its AR from the reasonable 701 to begin with using both Golden Vow and a Wondrous Physic to enhance holy damage. We can shoot that up to just under 900 at 867, which is not too shabby for a power stance weapon. Not all, you know, nearly 900 on a single weapon is nuts. Then we have the Ash of War, the big slam, 2200. That Was that half its health? Will it die in this hit? Oh, I blocked it. We'll never know. We'll never know. There's no way to tell. Still, three L2s and a kill in New Game Plus is not too shabby at all. That was a very quick kill. Power Stance Hammers in general, I really like. I think they've got a great quick attack combo. And they're great for breaking through guards and dealing good posture damage, especially on the jumping L1, where you absolutely dumpster through that. I do hope we see more of the hammers, or at very least Maricus Hammer in the future, maybe in PvP, but we'll have to see. I think we need to see greater buffs to hammers specifically before that will happen. Similar to how we saw the Colossal Weapon buff in this patch. But there you have it. Those are the five weapons I wanted to take a look at today. For me, the clear winner is any Colossal Weapon with an Ash of War improvement. In this case, the Royal Greatsword. That thing is an absolute 
absolute beast now. The damage was just incredible before patch. And now with the improved speed at which it comes out, and of course the recovery time, it's, it's a lot better to use, let alone the improvements to colossal weapons as a whole that it benefited from. Let me know your thoughts on this, and if you have any weapons to suggest that have become very good in this patch, let me know. If you want to see more videos like this, drop a like on the video. It would be greatly appreciated. But for now, I've been Hollow. You've been you. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos. Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes. Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice. To reiterate that it is nice. To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage. Is, uh, goodbye.